Do you like anime with deep and riveting characters? What about anime that says a lot about society? Do you like anime that's basically just straight up porn? Well, good news! If you answered yes to any of those questions, boy do I have the anime for you today. Good evening gamers and welcome back to The War. That is the weekly anime recommendation, the show where I go out, I watch a frick ton of anime. I throw out all the bad ones and I come back with one good recommendation for you, the viewer. Now today's anime is weird as balls. And I wanna say that right up front because it's a little jarring to people who might not know what to expect at first. It has a lot of just weird animation style and a lot of like weird storytelling stuff going on. It'll just kind of cut around and a bunch of different things. And until you get really comfortable with like the premise of the show, I think it's a lot to digest. I would definitely give the show till episode three. Like if you watch the first episode and you're not quite sure if you like it or not, I would definitely give it till episode three because it took a couple episodes for me to kind of get used to sort of the grind. The anime in question today is, of course, the phenomenal Devil Man Crybaby. It's a Netflix anime. It came out in 2017, 2018, sometime around then. And it was directed by Masuki Yuasa, which is the same guy who did Ping Pong the Animation. I know I talked about that a couple weeks back, but essentially it's a really great sports anime. If you've seen Ping Pong the Animation, Devil Man Crybaby borrows a lot of stylistic features from Ping Pong the Animation. It has sort of weird, goofy animation styles. It has sort of a weird, blurry aesthetic to it. I don't know how to explain it, but they if you watch Devil Man Crybaby and you watch Ping Pong the Animation, you can just tell they're done by the same guy. So the show is set in modern day Japan, where basically a bunch of demons have taken over high society and they've infiltrated a lot of like the ranks, right? They've basically possessed people and have taken over um, high society. The main character, Akira, kind of a beta boy, he lives in this modern day society, unaware of anything that's going on. His old friend, who's been dicking around in America, returns home and they visit each other. They go to some like cult orgy party and Akira gets possessed by said demon, except he doesn't get possessed. He has a strong enough will that he basically pulls a Chad card and he basically makes the de devil his little bitch. And so now Akira's an alpha male and he gets a lot of pussy and he basically runs around society killing a bunch of devils. That's the premise of the show. Um, man, I really gotta do a better job of selling like the shows on these recommendations. The thing I love about Devil Man Crybaby is it's very character driven, but at the same time, they don't really make the characters super dense. They don't give the characters like, like paragraphs of backstory and like paragraphs of like motives and like make them super complicated, they make them very simple and they're very relatable because of it. It makes it very easy for the story to just progress. There aren't a whole bunch of like narrative tightropes that the writers have to walk. It's a very straight line. There are characters who want things and these are the things over here and the story is just like the characters going to their goals, right? It's almost mind numbingly simple, but it just works somehow. It's really a joy to watch and yeah, I don't know. I think having just the simple characters and just very basic narration, not really telling, just sort of showing a lot, and not being overly ambitious with what it tries to show you, does wonders for the show itself. Another thing that I really commend Devilman Crybaby for is having the courage to sort of step away from the traditional anime like genre and sort of do some new interesting stuff. like. Anime has a very fixed sort of style to it, and it's kind of scared of showing a lot of mature things and exploring mature themes in a mature way. Devil Man Crybaby does not shy away from, I'd say, sort of going into more adult-themed things, right? And I'm not just talking about nudity here. I'm talking about, you know, the themes of society, the themes of war, the themes of, like, human nature, things that are a little dense for kids, and a lot of anime do show these themes. Like, for instance, Attack on Titan is on my mind because I just made a big video on it. But Attack on Titan, it shows a lot of these very deep themes, but it keeps a lot of the kid fun, a lot of like the shonen elements to it, even though it's kind of grown beyond that. 
Devilman Crybaby doesn't really feel the need to draw off any shonen or any sort of like anime, like inherent genre related things, right? It just shows the story it wants to show and it's very non-traditional in that way, but it works and it succeeds because it's willing to sort of take that risk. So it's just very well done in that regard. So this brings me to my two big criticisms of Devilman Crybaby. Firstly, there is a lot of stinking nudity in this show, and it's basically to the point where there are set, like scenes that are just porn. And it really bothers me. It may not bother everyone this way. I think it comes from like when I was a little kid, I'd be watching a show with my parents, and something would come on the TV, and it would be like really sus, and I would just get really awkward. I'd go like get a glass of water or something. So every time I see like a sex scene and like TV or movies, it really makes me uncomfortable. And I know there's sort of like, in Devil May Cry Baby, one of the themes is sort of coming of age and puberty and sort of like that whole like kind of thing. So I get that there's gonna be some sex and it's like, you know, kind of has a theme to it, but it still just makes me cringe. Uh, and I wish it wasn't in there. So that's my big criticism, number one. The second big criticism I have, and it's not really even a criticism, it's just the animation style is a little weird. If you watch Ping Pong the Animation, it has a similar style to it where it looks kind of blurry or like muted. There's like, I guess, low attention to detail in the animation. It actually looks cool and I think it lends, like it's a unique style and it lends itself to the show, but it may not be everyone's cup of tea. It's a little weird and it's a little jarring at first. Once you get used to it, it really works. But yeah, it's just a little weird. So, I mean, those are really my two big criticisms of the show. So this brings me to my review of the show. So in terms of characters, I'm gonna give this show a five out of five. The characters were all interesting, they were engaging. I was never bored for a second paying attention to the characters. Um, so five out of five for characters. In terms of animation, I'm gonna give that a four out of five. I think the animation worked. Um, like it didn't really bother me. I think some people might find it a bit jarring because it's a unique style. I think once you get into it, it doesn't really bother you, but um, just because of that, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. In terms of originality of story, I'm gonna give this show a five out of five. I think having the maturity and the, I guess, originality to explore those like mature themes I was talking about really set this show apart. And it makes it become something that you can enjoy on like multiple rewatches. Like the reason I'm talking about this show is I just watched it for the second time and it blew me away. Like there was so much I didn't even realize the first time because I watched this back when it came out. And I was a much younger, less mature Ethan. Um, shoot, I just leaked my real name. You know what? It's fine. Um, and yeah, it's just, it has a lot of depth to it that you can almost enjoy it more upon repeated rewatching. I'd be interested to go back and sort of watch Ping Pong the Animation. The one thing I noticed on, the biggest thing I noticed upon rewatching it is it's weird as balls. Like I didn't notice how weird a lot of the stuff was the first time I watched it. And then the second time I was like, man, this is like jank. Um, but it does lend itself to multiple rewatchings. I think it's, you know, a mark of a good show if you can enjoy it just as much the second time, if not more the second time as you did the first time, right? So really well done on that regard. In terms of, what do I have left? Right, in terms of the anime cringe, I'm gonna give that a four out of five. There was a lot of stinking nudity. It was to the point it detracted from my enjoyment of the show. But I think it was more than just like purposeless nudity. Like there was a lot, there wasn't really any anime cringe to it. It was just kind of like, it was usually there to like sort of display a theme. Like these characters are like, you know, coming of age or whatever. So it's not really that bad. It just kind of was a bit jarring to me. So I'm gonna give that a four out of five. So anyways. Overall score, I'm gonna give an 18 out of 20. Amazing show. I would definitely recommend you give it a watch. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. And I will see you gamers next week on The War.